Hey, welcome to Echo Conversations. I have here with me Rob Bettis, who is a Google partner. That's correct. Uh, what comes, like, how do you... <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, so um, I am certified in both uh, Google Ads and Analytics. I have been for about 10 years. And as a part of that certification, I've become a Google partner, which means I have a certain level of training uh, that, that nice. Google requires to, to manage accounts. Yeah. And so today, because I have you, the partner, here uh-huh. with me, the partner, uh, the partner uh, we're going to talk about Google gr- Grants, specifically Correct. nonprofit, uh, this, this system this, uh, that Google has set up for nonprofits. Sure. Yep. Uh, and I've heard it's $10,000. Yeah. of free Google ad money mm-hmm. that is offered. Is That's that correct. right? Yeah, so the Google Grants program is something Google offers uh-huh. to nonprofits who want to advertise on the Google Ads network. Um, and if you apply to be in, if you're accepted, then you get uh, a, kind of a myriad of benefits, including like a free subscription to G Suite, which is yeah, nice. what it used to be called uh, Google Apps. And you also get um, a credit for free advertising on the Google Ads network. And it's uh, currently $10,000 a month is what that that uh, grant is for. I'm so glad to have this conversation with you because you were super knowledgeable about this. And I feel like most ministries and nonprofits that I have talked to know this exists. But I think there's a lot of skepticism and a lot of misinformation about exactly what is offered. Is this real? It Mm -hmm. feels kind of like Google, the big bad, big brother kind of thing. Is like, could this be a trick or something? Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to either confirm or set the record straight. Set the record straight uh, for Google um, uh, with this. So, uh, yeah. So is it? Let's just jump right in, sure. and I'll play the part of the uh, the skeptic. Okay, yeah, so um, ten thousand dollars. Yep, seems like a lot for Google to give me. Is it really like actually? You know how like there's credit card bonus miles. Uh-huh. It's not actually a mile. Right. So like, <laughs> is this like that, or is this like real? Ten thousand dollars. So yes and no. Okay. It, it, it is ten thousand dollars. That okay. is what the grant is for. Um, there's limitations for how you can spend that ten thousand dollars, and I would say, as a result of those limitations, um, for most uh, advertisers, for most nonprofits, it's it's somewhat unrealistic to think that you'd actually spend the full ten k. Okay. Uh, I've managed accounts for for national and international nonprofits using the grant before, and even they have a hard time maxing out the full grant. Interesting. Um, and meeting all the performance requirements that that Google places upon the account, but it is. You know, uh, for many nonprofits, it's still a tremendous amount of free advertising. Yeah. Hey, uh, ministries, nonprofits, free, you're, you're talking uh-huh. our language, right. which is why it's super enticing, and it's a really interesting concept. Yep. Um, so, again, skeptical. Uh, it feels really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for a lot of guys who, again, ministries, the heart is just to reach people. But now I've got to figure out, like, when I look at Google Analytics – Man, it's overwhelming. It feels really hard. Um, is it hard? <laughs> so so maybe, that's a, yeah, that's a big question, and it's we'll dig question. through stuff. But it feels really. It's intimidating. Let me say that. It feels intimidating. I think that's a better way to put it. Yeah, it is intimidating if it's new and it's not something for your, uh, you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of verbiage and a lot of tools that, that um, you know, most ministries probably don't need otherwise other than okay. this grant. So um, although there's the free advertising dollars floating out there, I think for, for most ministries it's – it's it's probably worth weighing the the cost, be it time or financial, sure. to to get someone to kind of put that to work for you, okay. um, or or to put that to work for yourself. So, um, some knowledge of of analytics is good, and certainly a good knowledge of of Google Ads is also helpful. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say someone couldn't you know spend some time learning the basic skills to, and and do it themselves. Um, the good thing is you're playing with house money, right? So like yeah. if it's not the most efficient account, it, it, eh, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but you also have this opportunity. And so for a lot of, uh, a bigger ministries, it might be worth spending the money to get someone to manage that account for you because the cost of, of management is still going to be 
uh, insignificant over the the total value of the free ads you're getting. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so I'm you, I'm I'm interested. You've piqued yep. my interest. Uh-huh. I've laid my skepticism aside temporarily. That's right. <laughs> Uh, am I eligible? Like, what are who's eligible for this? Are they just handing this out to anybody, or? Yeah, I, th- I think um, you know anybody probably not, but I would say most ministries are probably eligible for it. Um, there is an application process. You have to prove that you're a five hundred one c three. You have okay. to uh, approve uh, or confirm a few things about um, what your organization does and what its intent is. Um, so, uh, of course, there's there's limitations if you're promoting violence. They're not going to allow you in, in the program, some things okay. like that, that, yeah. that most uh, reasonable people would understand. Um, but if, if you're just kind of a normal ministry doing service work, uh, there's a high likelihood you'll be accepted. Yeah. I think I read somewhere it's, it is, they try to focus on the service part of that. So like mm-hmm. that's specifically kind of what they're, I, I saw that language written yep, somewhere. For sure. Service was a big part of that. Yeah, it's a, a big piece of what it, you know, they want to make sure the ads that you're advertising to relate directly to what it is, the good that you're providing. So okay. th- there's a connection there. Um, there are a, over 35,000 uh, nonprofit organizations already in the program. So to, just to give you a, a sense of the size, it's, it's pretty okay. significant. Nice. Yep. So uh, eligibility requirements? Uh, yeah. Are there hoops to kind of jump through or what's the – I know there's an application yep. of sorts. There is an application process, and that's probably the um, – uh, for someone who's comfortable with AdWords, that's probably the hardest part. Um, okay. There's uh, just getting the, the administrative pieces uh, of, of your 501c3 certificate and proof that you are who you say you are. That sort of thing is is a bit cumbersome to get started for, for most uh, folks. Uh, but um, once you are accepted, there are some requirements to stay in the program. Um, and this is... Uh, there were some significant changes in the Google Grants program back in March okay. of 2018. And so some of those changed some of these requirements to stay in. Uh, there's certain performance. The account has to perform at a certain level for you to maintain your grant status. Um, you also have to check the account periodically in order to continue keeping it in good standing. Sure. Um, you have to uh, structure the account in a certain way in order to to uh, adhere to Google best practices, which just happens to be a, a requirement of the program. So that makes sense. It, it's not, um, they're not erroneous requirements. It's sure. the kind of things that, that Google wants you to do to be a, a good steward of, of the money that they're donating. Um, but I think one thing that is really helpful when we think about this is like what's Google's what's their deal? Why are they doing this? Yeah, what's in it for Google? Yeah, Yeah, that's a great question. And and I think to put it in context, um, one of the requirements of the program is that there's a a bid cap of how much you you can bid for the traffic that you're targeting with ads. Uh, If you're not familiar with... Yeah, it's it's great. Unpack that a little bit. um, With Google Ad Network, uh, when you do a search result on Google.com, you get um, two types of results. You get paid results and you get organic results or natural results. Um, as an advertiser, there's really not a direct way to influence the organic results. That's Google's algorithm and uh, algorithm doing its magic behind mm-hmm. the scenes. But the paid results are uh, are influenceable, and and there's really kind of an auction that takes place that decides which ads show based on who's bidding on them. Uh, not purely just who has the highest bid, but the the quality of their ads, the historical performance, okay. some, some other metrics. So. Um, uh, they're all text ads. Uh, um, Google offers different types of ads, but the Google Grant program is limited purely to text uh, yeah. or what and they call their search network. I think, I mean, most people are familiar that when you search for anything, the first, usually I think it's like three mm-hmm. uh, kind of changes. Yep. Like it two, does. five. But usually I feel like there's three or so ads that, and, and it's delineated. It says ad or sponsored or something. Yep. It probably also changes. Yep. I feel like I'm always being A-B tested, so yep. it's always changing. 100%. But uh, yeah, so uh, the first few, and that's what you're talking about. Yep. Uh, under the search bar, before the organic searches of usually what I end up clicking on is more organic, but mm-hmm. you can influence those top few ads. That's what you're That's what you're banking on here. That's correct. Yep. So it really gives a small organization an opportunity to show up first for certain yeah. search results. Power. Um, that's, yeah, so that's that's awesome. I mean, it's it's a, a nice opportunity. You're also putting your brand in front of people who are searching for the types of services or um, right. or organizations, you know, whatever category you're in. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so that piece is really nice too. And, and to some degree, um, on a per search basis, uh, you know, a really small organization and a really big organization that kind of, it levels the playing field, you right. know? Um, so those are all a big pros, but, um, back to the, back to why would Google do this? That yeah. type of question, yeah, yeah. um, Sorry. is, <laughs> uh, it, uh, yeah, uh, is because the, the auction bids are capped or limited, um, th- it kind of creates a, 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 a duality in the system, right? Mm-hmm. There's the people that can bid anything and there's the people that can only bid a little bit. Gotcha. And so largely speaking, the people that can bid lots of, you know, high bids are going to show up in the top, you know, one to three ad positions. And that's going to account for 80 plus percent of the clicks uh, of the bids. So to some degree, Google is donating kind of this lower tier unused level of ad placement to the nonprofit space. I would imagine they're taking a hefty like tax write off on all of the sure, ad dollars okay. they're handing out. Uh, but uh, so that's a little bit of a cynical view. The, uh-huh, the positive right. view of that is that most of the terms that ministries or nonprofits are bidding on are often terms that uh, you know the rest of the for-profit market may not have an interest in. Yeah. And so occasionally there's overlap, but for a lot of my Google Grants clients, you know, if, if they're bidding on terms that there's really not competition in, so the, the even though their bid is capped, it's it's not a huge detriment to them, and, okay. and they're still getting good placement. Yeah, interesting. Yep. All sounds good so far. Yep. Um, the skeptic, you're you're winning me over. Okay. Uh, are there? I mean, be honest with me, Google partner. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are there any cons? I, I don't get my badge removed. <laughs> my badge. Yeah, fair. That's fair. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Are there any? I mean, is this something uh, everybody should be? Or are there any people that maybe this wouldn't be awesome for? Yeah, I, I think depending on the nature of your ministry, like it could certainly be much more difficult um, or much easier. You know, depending on the types of terms you'd want to target. And and honestly, like, what's the value of driving traffic to your website? You know, like, if is your ministry in a place where that is going to move a needle in a significant fashion? Or is that not really, you know, w- what you're doing? And so uh, I think for some ministries, it can be a bit of a distraction if it's mm. not really part of a, yeah. an overall plan, an overall process. Um, but for, for most ministries, I think it can be beneficial just to, for exposure, if nothing else. Okay, cool. And, and if you get the 10K a month grant, that doesn't mean you have to do it at like a 10K a month level. You know, you may just want to bid on terms for folks searching for just a sub-segment of, of what it is that your ministry does, and, and that's okay too. Yeah, you just said something that I think I didn't know and just skipped over, but this 10,000, that's a month. That's a month. Okay, yeah. yeah I didn't, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah. That, so that's like even more. I thought that was maybe just like a, a an, an annual, go for it. Or, yeah, or there's, annual there's or just like yeah. here's the, you know, go for it, use this up if you can. Yep. But that's a month. Yep. Yeah, that's a, wow, that just got even more valuable. Yep. It renews monthly. Um, if, if you don't use it, you lose it. You can't stockpile. Uh, yeah, let's talk yeah. about that. F- so if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't use this, you lose this. Yep. So uh, like you said, a lot of people find it difficult to even reach the 10000 a month. That's true. So at what point do you lose this? If you're not like you said, checking in on it and like what, how do you lose it? Yeah. So I guess there's two versions of losing it. You can be um, removed from the program for, for not adhering to the performance requirements okay. or the structural uh, account structure requirements, those sorts of things. Um, it's a two strike thing. You get warned. And then if, if for two consecutive months you're failing to meet their requirements, then, then you'll lose access to the program. Okay. So that's one thing. And, and that's, um, you know, if, if you're doing everything with good intentions, that's not a, a huge concern. When we talk about the 10 K a month budget, that's, um, that's something that just renews monthly. So if you, if you've got an account built out and you're able to spend say 2 K a month, which is still an, an awesome benefit, yeah. um, that other 8 K at the end of each month would, would just disappear. Okay. And then you'd start the next month with a fresh 10K. No but, rollover. Yeah, it's not rollover minutes, you <laughs> know. <right. laughs> um, but like, you know, what are you going to do when you have tens of thousands of, of dollars and you can only spend, you know, uh-huh. the small sub-segment of that anyways? It's it's yeah. not it's not a huge restraint for, you know, for most ministries. Okay. It's fine. It's found money, yeah. in other words. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just curious because, you know, like if someone's using only 2000 for a few months and then they have like a, a quarterly campaign where they're just going to blow it out, yep. you can't um, accrue 
forty thousand right. dollars a month and blow it out. So I mean, I know some people's minds are already like, oh, mm-hmm. efficiency. It's like, no, nah, it's not how this works. That's so, right. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So uh, you're a Google partner. Yep. But do I need a Google partner? to manage this? Can I manage it myself? I think we've already kind of talked about this some, or do I need to hire somebody uh, to do this? Yeah, Um, you absolutely can manage it yourself. The opportunity is out there. It doesn't require a Google partner. Um, If you've got someone in your organization or your life that's competent in this area, that, you know, sure. Um, I think for a lot of um, a lot of ministries is probably going to fall out. You know, that skill set is going to fall outside sure. the skill set of someone on their team. Yeah. Um, and and if it doesn't, it's a capacity mm-hmm. issue too, right? Like, do you have someone on your team that has the time and attention to, to um, nurture this, to steward this well? Right. Um, and if you check those boxes, by all means, you know, uh, have someone manage it yourself. Uh, or themselves. Uh, if not, um, Google has a partner network, uh, a list of folks that are certified in, in various uh, aspects of Google Ads, and um, that would be the place I'd probably recommend starting as far as finding someone uh, outside that could step in and help you. Um, oftentimes, they uh, some partners charge a, based on a percentage of the ad spend budget they're managing, okay. which is with Google Grants. That's a little bit different than in the for-profit space. And then some partners just charge kind of a flat rate per month just to manage the account. And so um, that's kind of you know a, a typical what a typical relationship will look like. They don't necessarily have to be in your town. They don't necessarily have to yeah. you know be able to be in your office unless that's a personal preference. Um, so so there's a, a wide network of folks that you can choose from. Uh, you being a Google partner, do you have access to like special privileges or um, like you know, b- um, bonus? Like, what are the perks of using yeah. a partner? Do you have special access to tools that I don't have? A platform, you know, you know what I mean? Like, are I there? Do. Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, and one big thing is kind of a level of training that. Okay. Um, yeah. Of course. That comes with a Google partner, uh, in particular, if someone's done it for a number of years, because they've they've seen kind of the macro trends within the digital advertising space too, and that that kind of experience can be beneficial. Uh, Google partners also get access to some level of uh, additional industry information that takes Mm, place in the background. Um, There are channels uh, for support that Google offers that that I won't say a partner gets priority access to, but um, someone that that does this for a living probably knows the support channels a little bit better and can get issues resolved a little bit easier. Uh, off off camera, before we got started, we were talking about an issue with a particular client of mine where mm-hmm. some ads have been disapproved. And, um, you know, there's an easy solution to that. Uh, you know, uh, an email or a call can get that resolved. But a lot of folks, um, you know, that, that aren't in this space day in and day out may not know those, those resources are available. Yeah. Um, well, so I mean, I wouldn't know how to call yeah, Google. Just call Google. Just call it's uh, what, what 800 Google, right? Well, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that may be. A thing. Yeah, uh, you just talk to your uh, voice assistant in your home. There you and go. Say, hey, call That's Google. That's right. <laughs> call yeah. home. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's intimidating. I would imagine for a ministry leader. So like a guy yeah. like you. Um, you you know who to call how, or how to access uh, those resources to be able to because that's the thing that we we've encountered with our ministry partners like uh, there's a real um, fear uh, actually sure <laughs> I don't think that's too too um, harsh a term or whatever uh, there's a fear in uh, Google uh, shutting down our ad campaigns that we've worked hard on or yep. removing certain things because we're religiously affiliated. Um, so yeah, let's talk about that for a second, yeah. because not too long ago, there was an article circulating about um, a ministry, actually, I think this has happened a couple times, some ministry leaders, some pastors um, getting certain kinds of ads denied, um, and then that kind of turned into this, like, well, Google hates God, Google's, you know, coming after Christian freedom of speech, and mm-hmm. these kind of things, which are, you know, we don't want to take that lightly, because they're, you know, we're in a crazy world That's right. uh, that uh, doesn't always agree with our beliefs. But um, but I want to be very, like, I, I want to have a real conversation about, like, why Google would do that. Why would uh, why would they censor certain ads around these kind of topics? Um, yeah. So so let's, let's answer to some of that fear about censoring Christian ads, I guess. Sure. 
Um, I can say from, and, and not trying to make any kind of broad proclamations, yeah. I can say that I've managed uh, accounts for international ministries, the ad, where ad text includes God, includes the Holy Spirit, includes, you know, other terms that are overtly religious. Yeah. And, um, and I've had virtually no problem with, with ads of, okay. of this nature. I, I do, when, when ads for, for some ministries start getting in specific areas that could be misconstrued as mm-hmm. um, uh, having, you know, malintent, I guess, yeah. um, sometimes the uh, algorithmic approval uh, process that Google Ads runs will we'll mark those or flag those as disapproved. Um, you know, oftentimes I can then... Uh, reach out to a Google rep and have that overturned and just have a real human look at it and, yeah, wow. and use, you know, use their mind versus an algorithm and, and no problem there. So, um, I think ads, you know, for example, promoting violence ads that are, you know, uh, sometimes ads calling to action can, can sometimes, um, trigger the algorithm to think that they might be a little bit more, um, you know, militant and, and, yeah. uh, and well, some ministries can have a little bit of an aggressive, you know, certain campaigns can can have a, a more aggressive language sure. at times. Even, I mean, less aggressive nonprofits may even have a campaign that feels a little more aggressive. I, I guess you, you said it better. A call to action, like a, a very firm call to action. Yeah. <laughs> aggressive probably is the wrong and, phrase. And the branding of a campaign may just happen to include terms that are yeah. more, that in different contexts are yes. associated with things that yeah. aren't wholesome. Um, and and not that that brand has failed in their campaign. It just yeah. you know uh, Google's trying to do as much as they can algorithmically, uh-huh. uh, programmatically, and so um, that's it's a challenge from that perspective. But yeah. um, uh, we mentioned earlier the Google Grants program is limited to the search network, which are the text ads. Um, so I know that the the approval process for their other networks like YouTube ads. Um, which is their video platform or display ads, which is, you know, the banner ads Mm -hmm. network, those are going to be different, you know? And and so I can't speak to those in that context, Uh, but from a Google grants perspective, it's irrelevant because those aren't opportunities to advertise for Google grant recipients. So what I'm hearing you, and we've, we've uh, talked before on uh, other conversation, echo conversations um, at length about the algorithm. So mm-hmm. that's like this buzzword. I mean, uh, everybody's talking about algorithms, Facebook algorithm, Google algorithm. Sure. So what I'm hearing is that we, we need to take the time to learn about the algorithm and what the algorithm's looking for, because Google wants to serve its customers, mm-hmm. just like we want to serve our customers. We want to get uh, outreach to our people. Um, So we really need to just educate ourselves as far as to what the algorithm is doing and looking for, what it wants to not show, uh, and play to it. Um, Because as we've talked about with YouTube, the YouTube algorithm specifically, we want to feed it. I think it's like this with all algorithms. We want to feed it the right things so that it then outputs out, outputs yeah our stuff yeah sure um yeah so it's just education really like take away fear and replace that with educating ourselves i think it becomes a lot clearer right yeah and and some an analogy i use often is is google's trying to protect the goose that's laying the golden egg and hmm. i think from their perspective that's a really good search experience you know that's i mean google.com is still their primary yeah. you know, domain and advertising on it is their primary source of revenue. I mean, mm-hmm. I think they make like uh, 97% of the money that they make wow. through, through their ad network. And so um, they want that to be a good experience for the searcher. And to the extent that it stop, stops being it is a huge problem for them. Mm-hmm. So um, I've, I've experienced with Google Grant clients before, there's often a temptation to say, well, let's just advertise for anything because we have all this free budget. And, huh. you know, I understand that line of thinking, yeah. but if you look at it from Google's perspective, to the point you made just a second ago, that's not in the best interest of the searcher. Mm. You know, so Google may step in in a situation like that and say, "Hey, we're not going to allow you to to you know target traffic for these terms that really don't have anything to do with your ministry, or yeah. or only like slightly overlap with what your ministry does instead of something that's core to its you know uh, existence," and so. You know, it kind of encourages you to have, you know, ads that are very closely related to your, you know, your ministry operation that are very closely related to the landing pages that the ad sends traffic to. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, those, that kind of uh, progression of touch points, Google wants to protect and make sure 
as, as good for the searcher. Nice. Yep. So you mentioned the network, the partner yep. network. Um, you are also taking on clients all the time. That's true. Uh, how could somebody reach out to you if they have questions or if they are even wanting to hire you for a campaign or to manage? Yeah. What's the best way? Yeah, uh, robbettis.com okay. is the site uh, where you can learn a, a bit about me and uh, my experience managing AdWords. Uh, and, nice. Um, uh, AdWord management is about 85% of my business. It's okay. a huge, huge portion of my business. So, so you know what you're that's, doing. That's my sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been doing it um, for almost 10 years. So uh, nice. uh, clicks cost a lot more now than they did then. But uh, for the most part, the, the process is very similar. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, great, man. Thanks for I, – I feel less skeptical. I yeah. feel informed. I feel uh, I feel like I know kind of what's going on with this Google Grant thing. It's good, man. So thanks, it's partner. Yes. Well, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's it's scary. It's intimidating. I think is the word you used earlier, and I think yeah. I think that's great. And I don't think uh, if you have the information, I don't think it uh, has to be. Yeah, it's just a matter of whether it's right for your ministry. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks again, man. Yeah. And we hope this has been educational, informational for you, and that it's kind of taken some of the more intimidating edges off of uh, Google Grants. So again, if you feel like you want to reach out to Rob, uh, feel free. And you know, our interest uh, with Echo is to provide you with information to help your campaigns uh, to reach the masses. To uh, We know you guys are in this for ministry. Um, and so we want to equip you with the power and the knowledge and give you something like Ten thousand dollars a month uh, for nonprofits. We know that that's uh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, budgets are always tight in the nonprofit world, so we want to just equip you with these things. Uh, always feel free to reach out to us for more information, and we'll put you in contact with the right people. Um, but again, we just hope this was helpful, uh, and thanks again for watching. If you found this video helpful, share it with a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that bell so you're notified for all of our future releases. Also, find and like us on Facebook. And we have a bunch of free resources for you at echoglobal.org slash resources.